Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship. On this program, we will be studying 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, as we are told of the wonderful promise that our physical bodies will be resurrected, glorified, and clothed with a body prepared for us in heaven. And this is reiterated time and again for us in the oldest book in the Bible, all the way to the final book of Revelation. Please follow along in your King James Bible as we join our study. Everybody in this room is a professing Christian as I look around. Every one of you are going to live forever. Amen. Now if you just let that sink in real good, that's going to cure a lot of issues. As Jenny loves to say, and I'll say it for her since she's not here this morning, it's all going to burn. So don't get too uptight about it. I don't like uh, hearing people talk about how they went to heaven and came back and saw this or that, except for the Apostle Paul. I believe he was there. <laughs> but I don't like a lot of this other stuff because the Bible tells us enough, and we know the Bible is 100% correct. So the, I, we're going to this morning look at what Paul has to say, and we're also going to look at what uh, is found elsewhere in Scripture about what we could call our eternal house. 1 Corinthians 5 begins in verse 1. I have you read that with me. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. We have a, a, an interesting word there, the third word in this verse that uh, we really need to get a hold of because there's a lot of times where the Bible says we can know something, but there are an awful lot of Christians that seem to not think they can know. The Bible says uh, in 1 John 5.13, these things have we written that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And yet, you'll run around finding these professing Christians all the time who think they can lose their salvation, who don't really know if they're saved. Well, I hope so. I think I'll make it. You know, and all that sort of thing. The Bible never says you can think. It says you can know that you have eternal life. And the same thing's true in this text. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, and he's not saying it's a question of whether or not that's going to happen, but he's talking right now. Right now where you are, right now where you sit. If your earthly tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. Now, I know, I don't, I'm not saying Paul was referring to this, but it sounds a little bit like uh, nuclear warfare. <laughs> What if a nuke went off and your body just dissolved? But we, we know, even if right now your earthly house were dissolved, we have, present tense, a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Now that's just not talking about the fact that He's got a place prepared for you. He's got a body prepared for you. That body, once you're saved... That's another funny thing, silly thing about the idea of losing your salvation. The Bible says when you're saved, God has a glorified body waiting for you in heaven already. What, you lose it and then He throws it away? Where does He dispose of a glorified body? How do you get rid of one of them things? You don't. You get saved, He has a glorified body for you, and it's there, and it's yours, and you are positionally, judicially, as good as in heaven already. That body's there for you already. This past week they announced that they, they believe there are three times the stars in the heavens than they had originally thought. And now they believe there are 300 sextillion stars. Now, uh, that means million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, and I think septillion, and then after that sextillion. So you put uh, six... Uh, sets of three zeros after the number 300 as a number I can't even fathom, no one can fathom and they're uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, and they're just <laughs> guessing they're guessing by the way but let's say they're close even the Bible says there's only one purpose for all that the heavens declare the glory of God all that just to declare the glory of God. Well, why do I go to all that? Well, he's got to. He's so much bigger than that. He had to make it so beyond our comprehension just to give us the hint that God is that awesome and glorious. So there's a lot of things like that, and you come down to the bodily resurrection that just demonstrate his power 
His glory, and that He keeps His word. This glorification of believers is what enables us to stand in God's presence. We have to be glorified and be glorified without sin. And uh, this glorification of believers enabling them to stand in God's presence without sin is a basic Bible teaching from the oldest book of the Bible, which is Job. Uh, I believe we, we saw it's, it was written somewhere around 1700 B.C. and is the oldest book known to human uh, history. Older than the Egyptian Book of the Dead, even. And all the way to the last book of the Bible, uh, which is the book of Revelation, this is a basic fundamental truth. And yet, in today's seminaries and mainline churches and elsewhere, they deny it. And if you can do a search on the internet, you'll find website after website, article after article, challenging this idea of a physical resurrection and a literal resurrection and it's so clear from Scripture, and yet there's so much unbelief among those who call themselves Christians and preachers and the, and the, and the rest. But in uh, Job 19, beginning in verse 25, uh, this is an awesome uh, passage that Job, uh, we, we read in Job, it says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Let's, let's just read that again. Read that with me. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Just let that sink in, what Job is saying there. He knows that His Redeemer lives, and this Redeemer will stand at the latter day. He's already talking about the end times. <laughs> and He's going to stand upon the earth. That's Job 19.25, and then the next verse, verse 26, says, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah. Well, I used to, just every once in a while, get in this, this subject with the youth group, the kids. And they used to just love talking about it. I th and, but, I, you know, you're told... Kids don't want to hear this stuff. You got to talk about the contemporary things. You know, talk about teen sex and drugs and all that. Well, I'm not saying you should never talk about that, but kids are hungry to hear the truth. And they used to eat it up. We'd talk about this, and I, I loved it because I loved to eat it up too. But that ver last verse, uh, verse 27, he says, "Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another." though my reins be consumed within me. <laughs> so uh, mark that one down. That's one you should put on the uh, short list if you're building a memorization or uh, a reference. Uh, but you think of uh, Job saying, whom I shall see for myself there. And Isaiah 26, 19, pretty interesting statement made. And this is Old Testament. And I'm bringing this up because a lot of people try to pretend the Old Testament didn't say much about the resurrection. You know, when you see the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the New Testament, the major difference between those two groups was the, the, the Pharisees had gone beyond the Scripture and added all kinds of tradition. But the Sadducees were basically like the modern liberals today. They denied the resurrection. The Sadducees were Sadducee because they didn't believe in the resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can groan all you want. That's how I remember that. <laughs> but it's pretty sad. That Paul said, "If uh, we 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 of all men are most miserable if Christ be not raised, then we're not raised." So that was a, that was a very fitting name for the sad you sees. But in uh, Isaiah, you know, the sad you sees missed this one. Isaiah twenty six nineteen. He said, "Thy dead men shall live." Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. I mean, how many times he even really makes reference to the resurrection? The dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake, ye that dwell in the dust, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Four times in that one verse makes reference to that resurrection. And the Sadducees missed all four of them. <laughs>
uh, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. Michael the archangel uh, is uh, raising up to defend Israel. and uh, He says, verse 2, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So there's another one, Daniel 12, 2, that the Sadducees missed. And then, let's jump on down to the last book of the Bible I made reference to in Revelation 22. And in Revelation chapter 22, there's a great uh, phrase in these two verses. But beginning in verse 3, Revelation 22, 3, read that with me. And there shall be no more curse... But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. Now read this verse 4 with me. And they shall see His face, and His name shall be in their foreheads. That is awesome. That's what Job was talking about. He shall see His Redeemer. You can mentally and spiritually meditate on that future reward that at, you, you can make a list of the things that are considered a part of this reward we're going to but number one top of the list is to see the face of Jesus Amen. think about that, that just right there it, it, sometimes just stop you from thinking about anything else mm -hmm. there's coming a day when we're going to see the face of Jesus see him face to face now uh, Going back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, Paul continues on the same subject, beginning verse 2, and he says, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. The way it looks is that your uh, earthly body is resurrected and then clothed upon. So that might help answer that question is, you know, why is... The, there any bother of resurrecting that body that we had already, it's in the grave eaten by worms or whatever, <laughs> is that his plan is to clothe that body with glory. So it's still the body you had on earth glorified, clothed with the heavenly body. So they're going to be joined? Or... Yeah, to be like you now are clothed. That This is just clothes. Yeah. The real you's inside somewhere, somehow. And that's the way to be in the glorified body. And he closes, uh, or goes in the next verse and says, If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked, because that's the only two choices you got. You're either going to be clothed with the glory of heaven, or you're going to stand naked before a great white throne. Having not the righteousness of Christ, you stand naked before God. Ashamed, judged, and condemned by your own words, your own thoughts, your own deeds, your own sin. I mentioned earlier, we must be like Him in order to be in His presence. I mean, that's, there's no... Uh, I guess you could call that a eternal scientific fact. <laughs> you cannot stand in God's presence. The angels, for example, they, they are glorified, created in that state. And that's why when they fall, they are lost forever. And they can only be in God's presence in His glory if they are like Him. So in order to enter heaven, the Bible says we must be heavenly. And uh, that's a misused term a lot here on earth, but in the biblical sense, it's speaking of us being in a state of glory like heaven. And we find that uh, back in 1 Corinthians that we studied a few weeks ago. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 49, um, Paul says, And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we, also, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So to, so to be in heaven, you have to be heavenly. And not in the carnal fleshly sense the word's used, but actually of the same glory of heaven.